Welcome back. In the last segment we discussed operator overloading. In this segment we are going to discuss access control and the notion of classes. So it is possible to re restrict access to members or member functions of a struct. Okay. So there is a way by which we can declare a member to be public which means that there is no restriction. We can declare members to be private which means that they can be accessed only inside the definition of the struct and the same thing for member functions. So the typical strategy when we are designing these software components is to declare all data members to be private so that code which is outside of uh, uh, the definition, the, the structure definition cannot look at the data members and some subset of the functions should be uh, public. Okay. So, so that is sort of like the control panel. Okay. So whatever we want the external users to do, we are going to make them public. So here is a simple example. We have this struct Q and what we are saying over here is these are private. Okay. So to say that to, to declare these to be private, we just have to put private colon before. Okay. So this is the so called access specifier. And then the rest of these are public or the, the constructor and the two member functions are public. So we have put this access specifier public colon before it, that is it. Okay. So if you have such a queue then from your main program you would not be able to say queue dot elements. The compiler will say that look you do not, so this is a private member or and therefore you cannot access it. Okay. So you would be forced to use just these, just these uh, member functions. Okay. So yeah, so public and private are called access specifiers and they, they are written with that colon afterwards. And the idea is simple and access specifier applies to all members defined following it, members and member functions until another specifier is given. Okay. So in the previous case, uh, elements in waiting and front are private okay, as we said and Q, uh, the constructor insert and remove are public. Okay. So, so these appear after the private uh, access specifier, these appear after the public access specifier. Yeah. So basically you can, yeah, you can uh, decide how the struct works, okay. uh, I should say with all these using these access specifiers. Okay. And also operators, I mean if you want an operator to be accessible then you should make it public. So operator plus or operator star should also be made public if you want external code to be able to access that. So basically as a designer of a struct you can exercise great control over how the struct gets used and this might you might think of this as sort of creating barriers for yourself. So in a sense that is true but as I discussed some time ago you want to be able to claim that look my code is not touching the members even by mistake because and how am, why am I so sure of it because the members are private and therefore the data members are private and therefore I know that if somewhere I tried to access a data member then the compiler would complain. Okay. So that is, that is a good reason for making uh, things, keeping things public and private with a well thought out strategy. Okay, so this brings us to a term classes, a class which you might have heard quite a bit. Okay. 
and especially in the context of languages like C++ or Java okay, and also other uh, modern languages. So what is a class? A class in C++ is really essentially the same as a struct except for how the defaults work. Okay. In, in a struct everything is public by default, okay. but of course you can change it, you can put the access control, uh, access control specifiers. Okay. And in a class if you define something as a class then everything is private. So we will write a Q class here. So if I write this Q okay, and I have said nothing over here, I have not said private, but because this is a class, if no specifier has been given, then that is treated as private. Okay? So that is why these things would be private. Okay? And since there is a public specifier, these things would be public. Okay? That is it. So that is really the difference between structs and classes and uh, uh, classes are a newer term in the sense that classes are associated with all this philosophy about how to write code, okay, about uh, making member functions okay, and uh, making things which are public and private. Okay. So, uh, but, but it really is the same thing as a class which has been endowed with these member functions. Okay? So, in, so because C++ has the legacy of C and C has the struct which looks very much like a class, the designers of C++ said that look yes they are more or less the same, but we will keep this minor difference because in, in C everything is public. And therefore, the term struct which is coming from C also has that idea that everything is public except if you change it explicitly. All right. So what have we discussed? We have discussed access control and this allows you to hide members and member functions from users if you wish. Okay. And this is packaging, this is like packaging hardware components. Okay. So you do not want the people to see the wiring inside. Okay. It is not safe, uh, you may get a shock or something like that or in the case of software those are parts of the implementation and you are you may, you may, you may not know enough to handle those parts. Okay. Then we said that classes and structs are essentially the same except for the defaults. Okay. Next we are going to talk about classes for graphics and input output. But before that let us take a short break. <laughs>